Welcome back to uh, section 1.2. In the introductions, I'll talk a little bit about device operations, just basic device principles, and I'll hopefully raise a, a thousand questions that we can address throughout the course. We'll look at transistors, we'll look at optical devices here very briefly. So let me start from this transistor. It has a structure to it. Here's a typical example of a, a pictogram of a, a two-dimensional device. It has on the left a source, on the right a drain, and in the middle a gate. And you can think of this, the gate as a valve that can open and close a channel. Uh, the band edge of this transistor is sketched in red. On the left you have a source. In the middle you have the valve that is, is closed right now. There's a big barrier. And then on the right you have the drain where the electrons would like to get from the left to the right from the source and the drain. And a current will flow as induced under the, the gate. There's a channel. In this channel, as you open it up, more electrons can flow and current will rise. You lower the barrier more, more current will flow. You lower the barrier more uh, and so on. So you reach a, a large current dev uh, flowing device that uh, increases its current from a, a small number to a larger number. So if you do this in return, so as you uh, decrease the gate voltage, your current then goes back down again. All right, now let's relate this a little bit to the electrons that are sitting in the source. And they are arranged in, in, in states, and we'll learn what these states are. And it's not a homogeneous distribution of states. It's uh, a little bit of a uh, upside down pyramid, if you will. In this kind of sketch, there we will learn about density of states. Those are the states that are available. And you can think of uh, uh, then the occupation of these states are the electrons that occupy them. And maybe you can say electrons are lazy. They don't want to climb up to the upper floors. That has to do with statistical mechanics of uh, thermal distributions. So. Um, the, the lower floors the, uh, are occupied heavily, and the higher you go in energy, uh, the less electrons will be up there. But nevertheless, you will always have some electrons that will flow through this device. And uh, so in this kind of architecture of this kind of uh, MOSFET device, there will be a little bit of leakage all the time. That valve will never completely shut off. And um, uh, it's not like um, a, a mechanical on-off switch where it's truly off. All right, so as you then increase the gate voltage, you expose more electrons to a free path throughout the device and the current will increase. And uh, we'll learn that this device has a, a limitation of 60 millivolt per decade rise. And you'll understand what that means by the end of this course. As you increase the gate voltage further, you expose more electrons um, in the source to flow through the channel. You increase the gate voltage more, you uncover more and more electrons and make them available to flow through the device. We'll define something called a threshold current uh, that describes a transistor like this. And uh, here we have talked about a conduction band. I, uh, I have talked about a source and a drain that has some doping to it. Uh, we have a density of states. There's a Fermi distribution of thermally uh, distributed carriers. There's a density of states. What does 60 millivolt per decade really mean? So this raises a bunch of questions. Hopefully we can address those uh, throughout the course. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, today's devices are really three-dimensional devices. They're not really two-dimensional and flat. Uh, they might be in wire shape like this. We have material choices, we have crystal structures, we have geometry. Uh, structure of the, the, the device itself will cover issues like that throughout the course. And uh, since we have three-dimensional devices, we have modes, we have quantum mechanical modes. And here's an animation of the uh, uh, electron density in a um, nano wire. As the wire is turned on by a gate, you can see how 
electrons are starting to conduct throughout the device. And if you have that, uh, there's confinement. We'll talk about tunneling effects. We'll talk about strain. And again, these are concepts we'll touch throughout the course. And now let me talk a little bit about the optical devices uh, beyond the transistors. Uh, key elements here is that we have optical interactions between electrons and holes and uh, photons. We'll learn about conduction bands and valence bands and electron-electron uh, and electron-phonon interactions. So these are all concepts that, that may not mean a whole lot to you, but by the end of the course you'll be uh, able to converse with these terms in a meaningful way. And uh, really what this uh, does, it gives you a language to speak with that is very common in the semiconductor industry and you're ready to engage in research. But it, this is also, in a sense, the foundation of a, a job interview in that kind of industry. Um, even if you get a PhD and you engage in a conversation um, in this kind, with this kind of material, in an interview, they want to understand uh, uh, how you think about electron flows. What is your gut understanding and your um, perception of this technology and, and your quote-unquote feeling for this technology and they will probe the understanding of electronics and semiconductors. So in that sense it's your very entry into a technical job into the semiconductor industry. And if you continue to do research at Purdue this will be a PhD qualifying uh, exam material to be uh, admitted to the PhD program. All right. So that really concludes section 1.2, where hopefully I raised a bunch of questions that we can address throughout the course. And uh, I'll be stepping over now into the last section 1.3, where we talk about course content and requirements. Thank you.